Hello my friends. Today we're going to be building up this beauty behind me. Specifically, we're looking at this one 350th scale model of the USS Albacore, AGSS 569 by Micromere. The Albacore played a critical role in the development of the US Navy's submarine fleet after World War II, namely as the first Navy sub built with a teardrop hull. With advancements in nuclear power and air cleaners during the Cold War, it became possible for submarines to stay submerged for extremely long periods of time. Design priorities shifted away from surface weapons and towards underwater performance and speed. The Albacore launched in the summer of 1953, and for the next 20 years she helped pave the way in hydrodynamic research for the United States. She broke multiple world speed records for submarine travel throughout her service life and continues to influence submarine design the world over to this day. The Albacore was decommissioned from service in 1971 and now rests just down the road from where she was built in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. She's listed on the National Register of Historic Places and is a proud member of the Submarine Hall of Fame. And with that little bit of history out of the way, let's get right into the build. We're going to start with our main hull here. It's just two pieces split down the middle, but the detail on both sides is very crisp. After a quick test fit, it's time to join our two sides together with a bit of extra thin cement. We can hold that in place for just a little to get that nice secure bond, and then we're going to grab our Tamiya putty to clean up that seam line. We definitely don't want this seam to be visible on our finished product, so we're going to use a toothpick and spread some filler along the whole length of our seam. Once the putty is cured, we're going to grab our hobby knife and carefully scrape off the excess. I find that using the knife backhand like this rather than with the cutting edge of the blade helps remove just enough putty without cutting too deep into our plastic. We're going to keep shaving this away until we're happy with the result. Nearly all the putty should be gone and our seam should be barely visible. And for an extra bit of polish, we can just buff that seam down one more time with some fine grit sandpaper. When we're done with our seam work, we just need to rescrib the hull detail lines that run across the area we sanded, and we can do this with the back of our hobby knife. Once our hull is in good shape, we're going to move up to the sail. This is just a simple two-piece tower, and we can cement that together once the parts are all cleaned up. There's also one little clear piece that goes at the top of the leading edge of our sail. I'm not actually 100% sure what this portion of the ship was for, so if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments below. We can cement that right on there, and then our sail is ready to attach to the main hull. There's a nice clear guide spot here on the hull, so we can add a little bit of plastic cement and place our sail in position. With that secure, we're going to add our auxiliary rudder in place aft of the sail. This was added to the Albacore in November of 1960 as part of several new major design changes for testing. We'll pop that right into place and we can secure it with a bit of cement. Also part of that 1960 retrofit, the Navy changed the tail design of the Albacore from a traditional T-shaped control surface to an X design. There are some simple guide holes in place to ensure that we align each rudder correctly, so we'll go through each of those one at a time and cement them in place. Here's a quick view of the first two in place, and those will be mirrored on the bottom of the ship as well. Alright, next we are going to pop back to our propeller assembly. In 1962, the Albacore received yet another upgrade. 
This fourth major overhaul included a set of new counter-rotating propellers that you can see on this particular model kit. Micromere provides us with some lovely photo etch props for an extra bit of detail here, so we'll start by removing the forward propeller from the PE sheet. Once that's off, we can carefully twist our individual prop blades into position. Nothing fancy here, as we're in this tiny little 1 350th scale, but I think it looks pretty good nonetheless. Once the prop blades are positioned, we can sandwich this forward propeller in between the first two sections of the prop assembly. Our aft propeller comes in two separate pieces, which we also need to twist into position. We can glue the first one in place with a bit of super glue, and then we can add our second piece as well. This is a little fiddly and takes some patience, but stick with it, they'll fit into place. And finally, we just need to glue on the end of that prop assembly cone. With that whole sub-assembly complete, no pun intended, let's pop that pile of propellers onto the hull of our sub. All right, so we're getting to the end of our build here. Next, we're gonna add our periscope to the top of the sail. I sanded over the tiny guide holes up here, so I'm just carefully drilling out a new one with my hobby knife. You'll see in the reference images that the albacore is currently only fitted with one scope, so I left a few off that were called out in the instructions because I might wanna make a little diorama for this down the road. And there you have it, my friends, our 1 350th scale albacore. Stay tuned for our next video where we'll paint and weather this gal up, and please don't forget to like and subscribe right here to Sprues and Brews Scale Modeling. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.